Nityanandan Salatya Chakshigurun Malikandena Tasmai Sri Guravena Vanchakal Patarubhyascha Kipasindu Vrayata Vahitinanam Pahnayyoyashtivayana Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityanandana Sri Adhavayana Dada Shiva Sari Dona Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Now, our festival is coming to a close, and so we're having just a little Ishta Goshti, some questions and answers, and surprise, surprise, I'm asking the questions, and you are giving the answers. <laughs> Okay. On the first day of the festival, we learned about the qualities of the jiva, which are specific to Vedanta and not found in other philosophical schools like Nyaya, Vaisheshi, Sankhya, Yoga, Purva Mimansa. So, what are those qualities of the jiva? Yes. Just have one or two qualities. And the, these are the defects. The defects of the jiva. Okay, good, good try. Okay, over here, Rasik Yes, You see, those things are not part of the surup of the jiva. They are when he's influenced by Maya. So, those the, yes, those are some qualities of the Badda Jiva, conditioned soul, but they are not inherent to the Swaru of the Jiva itself. Yes. So, she has Jnana, she has Kriya, Kastri Tva, and she has Bhaktri Tva. Yeah. Jyatritta, Bhaktritta, sorry, Jyatritta, Kastritta, and Bhaktritta. He is a Noah, a Dua, and an Enjoyer. What are the three meanings of Gya related to him being the Gya, having Gya Tattva, the quality of consciousness? Three meanings of Gya? Someone? Yes. He is aware of himself. Yes. That uh, he is aware of objects yes. and that he is consciousness and can project that consciousness. Yes. Okay, almost. He has self-awareness. That is the uh, first meaning of Gyan. Then the second meaning, he has the um, attribute that his consciousness can extend and reveal objects to himself. So subjective consciousness without content, objective consciousness with content, and lastly, he himself is a substrate of consciousness. In other words, the jiva himself is made of consciousness. So he's made of consciousness and he has the quality of consciousness which can, by which he knows himself, that's the first one, and by which his jnana vritti can extend to reveal to himself things other than himself. Well, these are the three. But though he is made of consciousness, the third one, he is the substrate of consciousness, the conscious substrate of consciousness. But he's not jnana matra. He's not only consciousness because he has kartritva. He can desire and act and. Bhaktritva. He, he can enjoy. He acts by Kartritva and becomes the Bhakta, the enjoyer of the result of the actions. Okay. So, then 
After that, we discussed Brahm, different types of Brahm. One related to the self. What is the Brahm related to the self? Yes, Jibhubri. You're saying identification with the body. Would someone like to elaborate? That's it, Jacob. That the Atma invests the Ahankara with his ego, with his identity. Invests with identity. Yes, yes. The, e, the, the Atma himself has his own Aham, his own Ahankara. And he's, he's investing that in the darkened portion of the Chitta, which is his material Ahankara. That's it. So this is the first type of branch that is illusion in regard to one's true identity. Then the second type of Brahm, what is the second type of Brahm called? Yes, Brenda Like this perception of the world is also Yes, correct, that is correct. What's the technical term for that? Rasiko is aceism. In the test, you know? <laughs> Every time we have a test, Rasik aces it. He gets 10 out of 10. And then he spaces out. <laughs> yes. Mm, okay. Yes, Pritak Drisha. But specifically, there's a type of brown. What is it called? Probably on, is it right there? I can't see what's on the board. Uh, what does it say? Okay, I'll give you a clue. It's right there on the board in front of all your eyes all the time. Sadrisha Brahm. Sadrisha Brahm. Hmm? So, what does Sadrisha Brahm mean? Try to remember, it was very long, long time ago. Friday morning. That's definitely a part of it. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. Swatan. There are different aspects, you can describe it in different ways. He's saying, Swatantra Sataya. Seeing that there is a multiplicity of self-existent units. Mm -hmm. So really, Sadrisha Brahm means seeing a oneness in relation to an object. Just like saying, oh, this is the river. But that idea of one whole object called the river is in your mind. It's a representation. It's a chaya, a representation in your mind. Because actually it's just different water moving all the time. And you have made like a collective noun out of it and called it the river. Hmm? Like a flame. So the body is like that always. In a state of flux, changing, changing, changing. It has no single stability. It is not self-existent. It's not independent self-existent. So uh, this is uh, called this Brahm is called Sadrisha Brahm. And on the part of the person who has Sadrisha Brahm, he has Aikya Buddhi. Remember the idea that this is one thing. This is one thing. Mm -hmm. So the, in this way, Narad Rishi, to you this Timaraj, has made a complete deconstruction of the bodily consciousness. Now, we discussed the verses showing how this body, or any object in this world, is not a, a self-existent individual whole that exists independently of its parts. So really, there are just the parts. <laughs> what is this body other than earth, water, fire, air, ether? It's just the parts. But what is earth, water, fire, air, ether? They're also made of parts. So the, 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 we cannot establish logically the existence of the whole, only the parts exist. 
But then when you move down to that level, you see that the parts are holes in relationship to their parts. So that is also false. They are also not self-existent. <laughs> this body can, is not self-existent without the elements that it's made of. But the elements themselves are not self-existent because they're made of the tan mattress in Sankhya. Or in Nyaya, they shake the atoms. <laughs> so you go down, 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 and you find that you cannot establish any hole anywhere which is self-existent. So the actual one vastu, truth, self-existent truth, at the bottom of everything, is only Paramatma. Huh? Understand? And if we don't see everything as Paramatma manifesting, this is his one Paramatma has entered into the formless potential material energy in his form of time, Kriya Shakti, and he himself has become everything. Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. That's actually the meaning. And if we don't see this, then we have Sadrishya Brahma. Sadrishya Brahma. So two classes we discussed. Then, after that, we discussed how to be in Adesh, in our daily practices. And gave the example of the deep meaning behind our beautiful, very esoteric Mangalarti. And then, it became Guru Purnima. And we discussed the life history of Srila Vyasadev. Uh -huh. Who will be the next Vyasadev? Is our Vyasadev? What type of avatar is he? Uh -huh. yes. He is Narayan himself. He is not Shaksavesh. Hmm? Why do people think that Avi has a very good shakta base? Yes. Because in the other yugas, it is someone who is empowered by this. Uh, because in the other yugas, it's someone. This is one reason. There's another reason. Apantaraptama. There was one Rishi in the Mahabharat, and there it's described that he has entered uh, into, he, he did austerities, and then he became the Asadev. But that Rishi became the Asadev. However, one should think that Lord Narayan has manifested an expansion who did the role like a jiva and entered into himself like this. Just like Nanda and Yashoda manifested Drona and Dara who did austerities to become Nanda and Yashoda and who then entered into them during Krishna Leela. Like so we discussed many things in regard to Srila Vyasadeva. Then it became Sunatana Goswami Pai's disappearance. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained that the attainment of your uh, Divya Deha, your spiritual form, it comes naturally. It's the nature of Bhakti to give that. What is the Praman for that? That the Swarup manifests as the result naturally of the result of birth. What is the Brahman? I give you a clue. Mahaprabhu explained this verse in 61 different ways. Atma Ramas Tamune Yone Granta Apirukrame Kurvanta Hoyte Kim Bhaktim Itam Bhuta Ganoheri If someone is Atma Ram, self-satisfied, Muni, and there are different types, including those who have become liberated. Nea Granta Apirukrame, they are completely liberated. So if one has become liberated, and he has given up this body, and entered into Brahman, then Kurvanta Hoyt Kim Bhaktim Hitam Bhuta Garo Hari, how will he serve Hari? Unless the Supreme Lord, by his mercy, 
will give him a spiritual body. Because the jiva, without having either a material or a spiritual body, he cannot serve. So this verse, the Mahapu revealed the inner meaning of this verse. That it is the nature of bhakti that it bestows one with a spiritual body. Bhakti rasvabhava vai brahmaoiti akasha divya deya deya kare krishna krishna rabhajan it is the nature of bhakti divya deya deya it gives you a spiritual body and then you engage in krishna bhajan o bhakti bali prapta swarup divya deya pai by the power of bhakti prapta swarup one attains divya deya transcendental body bhakti bali prapta swarup divya deya pai Guna Krishna Guna Krishna Hai Bhaji Krishna Bhai and then the, in that spiritual body all the senses of the spiritual body are intensely attracted to Krishna's qualities and then he serves Krishna's lotus feet. All these are the direct words of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the explanation of the verse Atmarama Stumunya. This is why it's very important. Prabhupada Bhakti Stanswatakur in his poem Dushtaman to Miki Shara Vaishnav. Oh wicked mind, what kind of Vaishnav are you? In that song, he has said, oh, you should study deeply the Sanatana Shiksha. Almost all the problems and deviations which come in our body of Vaishnavism is people trying to jump over to the Prayojan without giving Dandara Pranam to the Sampanga Acharya, Sanatana Goswami, and deeply entering into his teachings. So first, become established in Sampanga Gyan by following the teachings of Srila Sanatana Goswami that were given by Mahaprabhu Chaitanya Charita in Madhya Lila chapter 20 to 24 and the writings of Srila Sanatana Goswami, especially Sri Vriyat Bhagavatamrita. Okay. So, I'm just going over this, I want to, everyone to refresh everyone. Don't let it evaporate into the air. During these now fifth, five days, you have heard so much, but now you are like a chipmunk, but your cheeks are full. But you have to chew it and digest it yourself. So try to do this. When my Gurudev would give class, I would listen and noting down everything. And then after the class, I would go and look up every verse that he said that I didn't know, find where it is and add it to it. And then study it and meditate on it. Repeat it to others and memorize everything in time for the class the next day. So take Harikata very, very seriously, like a full-time job. Hmm? Like you're in university and it's your final exam next week. And you are studying, studying. Thinking, trying to testing yourself, talking with others. Hmm? Guitar is our greatest treasure. Don't take it like something casual. Don't hmm? be distracted. Hmm? Sutta Goswami Pad is saying, those persons who always engage in hearing Harikata and they take it very seriously, then for those persons, Kalina Nati Dirgen, not in a, sh in a long time, it means in a short time, Bhagavan Vishate Vidhi. Bhagavan Sri Krishna enters into their heart. <laughs> Bhagavan enters into their heart. So in the commentary on this verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Vishnu Chakutakura said, Shravana Kirtanavato Bhaktasya Smarna Prayatna Na Vyasaka The meaning is, for those who are engaged deeply in hearing and chanting, they don't have to make any prayatna, any effort to do smara. So 
So for those who are engaged deeply in hearing and chanting, you don't have to do any effort to do smiling. Because if you are hearing deeply and deliberating on it, then when you chant Harinam, it will just start coming by itself. Krishna will manifest himself. So we can open the floor to the questions. Did you have an order of all persons who are? Yes. Okay. So just raise your hand. Yes, President Pro. I would like to ask Gurudev. Uh, Please explain two shlokas of Panamatatva. About uh, Namatatva. The meaning of these verses of these verses of Padma Purana are explaining that the holy name is Vikalparahit, free from Vikalpa. There's a camera right behind you. The present comes. So these verses are ex very important. They are explaining that Harinam is Vikalpa Rahita, free from Vikalpa. It's very difficult for a person who does not have a deep background in philosophy, in Vedanta, to understand what Shastra is saying. Because how will you translate Vikalpa? What is Vikalpa? If you look in a dictionary, it may say imagination or something like that. But it's not like this. Meaning is this. According to Vedic philosophy. When you see something, the immediate moment that you see it, there is a raw and unfiltered experience. And your, your senses sense it, but your intelligence has not identified the jati or the, ca the, the category that it is in. Hmm? So let's say you see a cow. So first, there is a perception and it is called Nirvikalpa Pratyaksh. That means indeterminate perception. Indeterminate perception. And then the next moment your intelligence moves and identifies what is the category of this object in front of you. So this is a cow. Hmm? There's the jati, the category cow, and this is the instantiation of one particular cow, and your intelligence has identified it. So then that level of perception is called the Savikalpa Pratyaksh. So, This is also applied to Bhagavan, to God. If a person has a nirvikalpa pratyaksha of God, this is Brahman. Because seeing Brahman means they see the truth, but they don't experience its particular qualities, its particularities. Now, when we see an object in this world, let's say there is a, a pot, so then first when you look at it, the senses just see something. And then in a split second, at once, the intelligence moves, the kalpa and identifies this is a pot. So now you put a name to it. This is a pot. So the name of this thing 
takes place after the process of Vikalpa. Right? There's Nirvikalpa Pratyaksha. But you don't know what it is. The intelligence moves, becomes Savikalpa Pratyaksha. And then you say, this is important, you give a name to it. So all the names of this material world, they are coming from the Vikalpa. The movement of the material intelligence in identifying the jati of that object after the preliminary indeterminate perception. All the names of this world are like. But here the Padma Purana is saying the name of Krishna is Vikalpa Rahita. Mm -hmm. the, it is free from Vikalpa. So what does that mean? That means Let's take, let's say, someone says to you, in the other room, you cannot see it, but in the other room, there is a pot. Now when you hear the word pot, at first when the sound comes, it's a nirvikalpa pratyaksh, you just heard the sound. But then vikalpa, your intelligence moves and identifies the word pot. And then the picture comes in your mind of what's in that room. So the sound is coming. And if you slow time down, the sound comes. And as soon as you hear that sound, the first level is I heard the sound, then the vikalpa comes in, the movement of buddhi. And the couple means like conceptualization. That you take the sound and then your mind conceptualizes what it is and produces in your mind a picture of some pot, a general pot. So it goes both ways. When you see something, then you go to Vikalpa and you put a name to it. Or you can go the other way, someone can say a name and you put a concept to it. So the Vikalpa goes both ways. Understand? So the Padma Purana is saying the name of Krishna is Vikalpa Rahita. Hmm? That means it is not that you see Krishna. <laughs> And then, you, what is that? And then your mind moves, and then your, your intelligence creates a name. So let's say, for example, if you have a son and he's born, then you, you think, what, I'll give him a good name. What name shall I give him? Frederick. Okay? So then you see him, then your mind moves and you come up with a name and connect it with him. So Krishna is not a person whose name came from Vikalpa of anyone. All the things of this world are like that. Horse, house, car, red, blue, all these ideas, they're all uh, produced, coming from the Vikalpa, human mind. First, raw experience, and then identifying the jati, and then giving a name. You see? But Krishna is not like that. Why? Because Krishna is Advai, non-dual. He is, he is indivisible. He is indivisible. So every characteristic of him can't be separated from him. So his name and Krishna are the same because he's Advait. He wasn't given a name by Gargacharya in the name giving ceremony. His name is an eternal aspect of his Swarup. And it's not different from him. And he himself is fully present in his name. So coming this way, it is not that the name of Krishna is given to him by Vikalpa, the process of Vikalpa, but it's part of his Swaru. Okay, now let's see coming the other way. If a person does not commit offenses to the Holy Name, then when they hear the name of Krishna, then there is what is called Jatiti Pratita. Jatita Pratita. Jatiti Pratita. Uh, jatiti means immediate and pratita means experience so if a person does not uh, commit nama parat he is 
So when he hears or speaks, it's not about us. Then, the name of Krishna, the sound will come, and at once the form of Krishna will manifest, without any vikalpa, without any movement of the intelligence, trying to identify what is the sound and create a conception about it. Because any conception you have is not Krishna. Because the mature intelligence is a, t is a rajasic transformation of ahankar. Mature intelligence, buddhi, is a rajasic transformation of ahankar. And all vikalpa is done by buddhi. You see? So how can the buddhi understand Krishna's name, identify Krishna's name, conceptualize about Krishna? So when the Padma Purana said that the name of Krishna is Vikalpa Rahit, it means one, that it was not given to Krishna by someone due to the movement of their mind having identified the jati or the, the universal, the characteristic of Krishna. And on the other hand, the name of Krishna coming this way is not identified as a sound and then connected with a concept but rather as soon as the sound hits the chitta, Krishna manifests himself there. That is called Jatiti Pratita. Jatiti Pratita, the example Jiva Goswami gives is this. Try to understand. Ten people were going on a journey and they got to a river. So when they got to the river, they hired a boatman and they all got into the boat, they crossed the river, they got out the other side. So then the leader of the group told someone, just count everyone and make sure we all made it across the river. So then, that person was counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, not home. Oh, there's someone missing. Someone missing, no, ten people in our group. And I'm only counting nine. He asked someone else, you, you should also check. So then that person, he counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're right, there's only, we've lost someone. So they're in a state of confusion. So one person who was somewhat smarter than them, he came up to them and he said to the person who was counting, Dasamas Twam Asi. Dasastwamsi, you are the tenth person. And what's it? Then he realized at once. So that is called Jatiti Pratita. An immediate realization of the truth of the situation. Dasamastwamasi. So in the same way, the name of Krishna is not a material sound. It is not something which is interpreted by the intelligence. It is not a, 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 a shabda, a word which is connected through conceptualization with, an, with the idea of who Krishna is. It's none of those things. But rather when a person is very humble and they don't, they don't commit any offense, then Krishna. And the beautiful lotus feet of Krishna appears. And you can have his darshan. Hmm? Nama Bas will do this. Nama Bas will give vision. Hmm? In the stage of Nishta, will give vision of Krishna's form and some qualities. In the stage of Ruchi, Nama Bas will give the realization of Krishna's form, qualities and sweetness and associates. Then you can follow them. That's Raghunuga Bhatti. How can you follow the associates if you've never seen them? And then when Asakti comes, your own Siddharu will begin to manifest. And as your Abhima, your identity, becomes more and more absorbed in your Siddharu, then Asakti will turn into Bhav, and that is Swarup Siddhi. Then you have become, you're suddenly successful in this life. Next life you will take birth in Krishna's Leela, in Bhava, Vrindavan, in some universe. So this is how the power of the Holy Name incorporates us gradually into Sri Krishna's Lila. Is it clear? If the mind automatically uh, will put uh, uh, the name of Krishna in some category, Will, will it will it be uh, apparent or not? Uh, 
answer. Yes, because it is one of the offenses to the holy name. Tadatabado Hari Namani Kalpanam. To give imaginary interpretation to the holy name. So if you put some material co category, conceptualization onto the name, this is one of the ten offenses directly. Tadatabado Hari Namani Kalpanam. So one should hear from Guru, oh, Krishna and his name, there, there is no difference whatsoever. Vacham vachakam mitudet bhavato nama surupa dvayam purvasmat parameva antakarnam tatrapi janimahe yastasvin vita paraga nivaha pranitsa samantats bhavit asyani dham pasat sopi hi sadhanandam budo majjati Rupa Goswami said. There is no difference between vacha and vachaka. Mm -hmm. Between Krishna, who is addressed by the name, and the name by which Krishna is addressed. There's no difference at all, except for one difference. Krishna's name is more merciful than Krishna himself. Because if you'll serve Krishna himself, he's here in the form of deity. You can make offenses, save Aparat, and uh, you will not progress. But if you chant continuously, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, then Harina will remove the, all your offenses. Nama Parad Yukta Nam Nava Ma Eva Harant Yagam. Continuous chanting removes offenses. And so Harina will take away all the offenses that you made to Krishna's Swarup. And turn you upside down and push you head first into the ocean of rust. So Krishna and his name are not different, but his name is more merciful. Another question? Yes, sir. What is the name of Jati? Jati, Jati. What is the name of Jati? Oh, Jati. <laughs> Jati means universal. And when you speak a word, a word always indicates a dravya, a substance, a gun, a quality, a kriya, an activity, or a jati, a category. So, for example, if you see an animal, you are not in the dark, you're not sure what it is. Is it a cat? Is it a fox? And then you realize, oh, it's a fox. So, it's a fox, but fox itself is a jati, it's a category. And this is... So, the words that we are using are jatis. They are categories, and they are instantiated in the things around. For example, you are all in the jati, the category of human beings. But then within that, there are sub-jatis, like there are men and there are women. There are, then you have the qualities, old men, young men. So, actually this question is raised in the in the, the Shrimad Bhagavatam. Prakshit Maharaj asked Shukadev Goswami, Oh Shukadev Goswami, every single word in the dictionary either indicates a jati, a gun, a kriya, or a dravya. But since the Supreme Absolute Truth is not a material substance, he has no material qualities, he has no karma, material activities, and he's not in a jati, it's not a universal. Because here is a dog, there is a dog, there is a dog. But Brahman, Brahman, the Supreme Truth is only one. So it cannot be instantiated in, in anything else because it's one. Eka. One without a second, so it cannot be a jati. So, Prakshit Maharaj asked this question in the 10th canto, chapter, in the first verse of chapter 87. Every single word is either speaking of a dravya, a gun, a kriya, or a jati. So, how is it possible to describe the Supreme Truth? <laughs> so, the words that describe Krishna are not mundane words. They are transcendental, they are Shakta Brahma. And they descend from the spiritual world, out of Krishna's mercy. So this... Uh, 
Shukadeva Swami gives the answer. And this discussion between them is called the Brahma Upanishad. It's an Upanishad that appears, it's included within Srimad Bhagavatam at the beginning of chapter 87 of the 10th canto. So you can, I have given classes on this, you can look online and find very long and in-depth explanation of this Brahma Upanishad and Ajati and all of these things. In, uh, it corresponds in Western philosophy to universals, like uh, Plato will speak about, when Aristotle will speak about universals. Uh, so the word jati uh, corresponds to that in Western philosophy.